Okay, so we're going to move forward into using your PAYS data in your community or school. And so when you registered, you may remember that we had asked you, how do you use your PAYS data? And it looks like uh, most of you use it for youth and problem behavior and program assessment. And then many of you use it also for presentations at meetings and also for grant applications. And we're going to get into exactly these issues by talking through using PAYS to take action. So in one way, we're increasing awareness and by social norming and doing reports to external audiences. And then we're also using the PAYS to do prevention program planning by helping inform program selection and grant writing. So we've got another poll for you. And this question is, which one of these statements best characterizes your PAYS reporting strategy? So if you could take a moment to respond. Okay, so it looks like about two-thirds of our audience create several different versions of the reports and resources and share them with specific subsets of the stakeholders, which is, I think, pretty much our ideal perspective on how to take the PAYS data and absorb it and reflect it back to your stakeholders. So that's excellent. We're glad to hear that. And we're hoping to promote more of that through this webinar. So using PAYS to increase awareness. The first thing we'd like to recommend when you're thinking through raising awareness in your community about issues in your community using your PAYS data, step one is identifying your audience. And the reason this is important is that different audiences have different interests. And so we want to make sure that we're thinking through clearly who we want to talk to, and that will help us figure out what kind of data is important and meaningful to them and how to convey that to them. So parents and other community members are, more, are probably more interested in certain pieces of information and want to hear that information in a certain way than a prevention board who is probably com comprised of a lot of very busy people. So this is sort of step one, just thinking through who am I planning to speak to. Once you've identified that audience, um, you want to think about the specific kinds of data that they would be interested in. So we've just come up with examples here. This is just a little bit of brainstorming on our part where parents and community members might be interested in 30-day alcohol, alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use. The prevention boards might be more interested in those risk and protective factors in Section 5. So this is just a quick example of thinking through matching up your audience with data that makes sense to share with them. And then adding another level of complexity to this, the method of presenting that data. So parents and community would have 30-day use, and we would probably want to present that to them by grade and looking at a comparison of gateway drugs versus the really hard, hard drugs, whereas prevention boards might want to see those risk and protective factors comparing highs and lows and change over time. And again, these are just examples. These aren't hard and fast rules. OK, so I'm going to pass it over to Brittany. And she's going to talk you through some more of raising awareness. Thanks, Steph. So Stephanie just took us through some steps in trying to identify the specific audience that we may want to share this data with. And the next step is to choose the medium that you want to communicate it with. Now, this shows you a, a list of the wide range of possibilities, uh, ways you can present the data, what uh, medium to use. And we won't be able to talk through all of these today, but today we're really just encouraging you to think strategically about what your goal is and which medium or possibly several mediums will help you accomplish that goal. All of these can be used to increase awareness of your PACE results, but some will be more or less effective depending on the context you're working in and what your ultimate goal is. So. Really, the, the theme of the presentation today is just to really be thoughtful about these decisions that, that you make. This is just one example of a, a way to possibly increase awareness of um, kind of what's going on in your community. And this is actual, an actual example from the field that Clearfield Jefferson Drug Free Communities Coalition shared with us. And basically what this is is a, a, a way to um, describe to a, a community or the actual students themselves about what level of use there is in their school, because there might be misperceptions about it. Um, now, theory suggests that students may have inflated ideas about how many of their peers use drug and alcohol, 
And the Pace data can, can be used to determine if that is the case um, by comparing estimates of use among their peers and how it compares to Pace self-report data on actual use. And if that comparison does show that there is a disconnect between what students think their peers are doing and what the peers are actually doing, then a community can um, explore various ways to correct those misperceptions. And this is just one example of what Clear Philip Jefferson chose to do and how, how they were trying to maybe uh, correct some misperceptions about drug use. So it shows here that, uh, did you know that 87% of Punxsutawney area school district students do not smoke, join the majority? And this data is geared towards the specific school districts. They create these posters for individual school districts using that school district's data. So again, that's just one example of using PACE data to increase awareness.